hello everyone my name is Devashish and I welcome you all to this video so in the last video we have seen how can we extract useful information out of a burp suit log and save it into a CSV file so later on we are going to feed that CSV file into our machine learning model uh, so that we can train our model using the data that we have passed uh, so in this video we are going to you know cover some of the basic machine learning concept uh, that uh, will use will be using in the you know upcoming videos uh, so before we get started, I'd like to put a uh, small disclaimer that, you know, I am also completely new to this subject and um, I'm learning things and uh, if at any point of time, if you feel like, you know, I'm not you know going into the right direction or I have explained something in a wrong manner, please feel free to point out and I'll be more than happy to understand or, you know, learn things from you guys. Uh, so now without wasting any further time, let's, you know, get into the subject. Uh, so let's try to understand, you know, how to teach a machine something. Uh, so before we can actually, you know, get that um, and question answered, we'll have to understand how we human, we as a human actually learn something. How do we make decisions? Uh, so to be able to understand these uh, two questions and, you know, to find out maybe, you know, partial answers to these questions, we'll have to understand, you know, um, we may, it's better if we take an example and try to understand, you know, how our brain does certain thing or how our brain learns certain things. So uh, let's try to understand how we recognize things. Uh, so if you take an example, right, this particular example, um, by just looking at this picture, we'll be able to easily recognize that this is a picture of a guy, this is a picture of a girl, this is a picture of a guy, girl, guy, guy, like that, right? It, it, it takes, you know, very small amount of time for us, uh, for our human brain to understand these things. So, uh, you know, how we actually, you know, reach this point so that we can easily understand, you know, who is who and what is or what is what. Uh, so our human brain is you know, pretty smart. And uh, this is how actually if you just, you know, if you take a step back and try to understand how we how our human brain does this so quickly, uh, we'll have to, you know, break the steps uh, from, you know, um seeing an unknown object and try to understand how um, how it actually understand what ob what the object is so let's try to understand that uh, so if we take an example of a human face right uh, our human brains actually you know quickly you know split that uh, split any image into you know uh, split or divide that image into different different features by by saying features i mean um, that you know if we consider this particular uh, image uh, so this uh, there can be you know millions of features that can be extracted out of uh, this particular picture uh, so those features can be you know length of eyebrows uh, left eyebrows right eyebrows uh, length of you know length uh, the distance between two eyes uh, the length of nose uh, the center uh, the distance between the center front from the nose and the left side of the um, lips and right side of the lip and distance this that and you know all these uh, lines that you see uh, those can be can be you know this this picture can be you know uh, divided into you know these features uh, so let's consider a table like this uh, so let's say feature zero is this one feature one is this one feature two is this one feature three this one and there can be you know hundreds of other features as well so if suppose uh, there is a test picture that you know whenever you get you see a picture of something it tries to uh, our human brain tries to you know save that you know different different uh, attribute of uh, that image into our uh, into a database like this like this like a table for example suppose we get this picture and it tries to uh, understand feature zero is this so maybe this distance is x and it will put x here suppose feature one maybe the you know uh, the length of right eyebrow maybe this is y and feature two is maybe uh, the distance between two eyes and maybe it is z uh, like that a b c so our human brain does it really uh, quickly and it actually you know extract these features from any image and you know it tries to save into the database so suppose a new picture comes into um, comes into picture uh, and suppose uh, you uh, your the brain has given a completely new picture and it has to recognize what is it it's a friend it's a girl or a boy or it's, a, it's, it's your family member or something so this is what it does it quickly after getting that image it quickly you know breaks that image into a different different features and it you know um, try to understand you know uh, you know if they have actually encountered encountered that um, image before from the you know previously saved uh, database or you know previously saved uh, features 
so if it actually you know find any similarity between previously saved features uh, and it actually you know it immediately recognize okay maybe you know this is a boy this is a girl or maybe you know this is our family member this is your uh, this is your brother this is a sis sister this is father mother just like that so this is how basically this is actually you know the sim uh, this is a this is probably the simplest way you can actually you know understand uh, the how this face recognition actually works so we are going to actually do something similar here uh, so to be able to develop this uh, the, obviously face recognition is a very complex problem uh, but you know when we are actually developing this IPS and the simplest implementation of IPS will be much easier so when we are talking about features in machine learning and uh, so let's try to understand with uh, one more example here uh, so uh, let's say we have you know we have a uh, data table uh, which is having actually you know two features height and weight and this is actually 4.11 weight is 45 and gender is f f m m m and for uh, just imagine you know there are you know thousands of you know thousands of entries in this um, database and there are a few entries where in which we don't really know whether the the gender of this particular uh, those entries are male or female so uh, so uh, we have a graph right over here uh, and uh, these two features are actually aligned in you know x and y axis uh, so height is here weight is here if we try to plot this particular uh, this height and weight in this uh, in for all this you know thousands of entries uh, maybe uh, if if 4.11 and 45 so it will be somewhere here uh, it will be somewhere here sorry i have to take this like this uh 547 547 it will be somewhere here uh 6 to 80 6 to and 80 so it will be somewhere here so um, as actually if just you know since the data set is pretty smaller uh, pretty small uh, by you know looking at it you will understand you know for uh, females uh, the it will be somewhere it will the data point will be somewhere like this you know since uh, the weight and height is you know compared to men it will be you know lesser and for guys uh, for you know for males it will be most of the height and weight points data points will be you know it will be somewhere here so from here you can easily understand that you know uh, these are actually you know uh, these are all similar data points these are all similar similar data points so uh, so uh, in machine learning you can actually call this data sets or you know similar data set as a cluster as a cluster so let's say we have in this particular problem we have two cluster cluster one c1 and c2 i beg your pardon i am really bad at you know painting uh, you know things using the ms paint so yeah this is c1 and c2 uh, and so now let's try to let's try to understand that if we have some entries you know um, in this particular database where we don't really know whether it's a male or female uh, can we actually you know uh, uh, predict whether uh, predict their gender whether you know it will be male or female so this is how you can actually do that so if you try just try to plot you know 5.1 and 49 it will be you know 5.1 and 49 it will be somewhere here and 682 6 and 82 it will be somewhere here so these are all our um, you know newly uh, plotted data sets this one and this one so but you can easily tell from this particular plot that this particular entry the first entry is definitely a female and the second entry is definitely a male since you know uh, since it is actually you know um, the, the second entry is uh, falling into this cluster c2 cluster and the the first entry is falling into c1 cluster so this is actually the exact concept we are going to use in our machine learning based ips as well so yeah this is uh, this ips will be actually doing some clustering to kind of you know um, to kind of recognize whether any request is bad or uh, bad or good uh, that is actually you know uh, being sent to our server 
so uh, this is a very important concept that i have actually you know explained right now and i don't think it is that difficult uh, so this, we are going to use the exact same thing but uh, in this particular case we had only two features uh, but in our case we'll have more features and how we are going to get these features yeah this is let's come to that so what we have extracted so far for bump block is you know simple http request so we'll have to extract this feature from http request itself so those features can be you know various uh, there can be many types of feature for example uh, you know number of since uh, you know if we take a look at sql injection payload uh, usually there will be single quotes there will be system uh, there is single quote double quote double dash you know braces like that so uh, we will have to you know come to a specific set of features that we are going to extract from this this request based on which we are going to judge whether uh, whether any request is good or bad uh, so uh, so far uh, uh, we'll be extracting these features for example you know whether a single quote is present double quote is present whether double dash is present whether uh, you know this any special character is present or not whether we have you know uh, this uh, and this special characters are present in this you know uh, url or you know post payload itself and these are the you know features that we're going to collect uh, so now let's have a look at you know the log parser that we have developed in the part two of uh, our video so if you if this is the first video you're watching you haven't watched the first and second part i'd request you to uh, go to my channel and watch the part two of this video uh, so in that in that part two actually we have developed this script to kind of parse burp log and extract uh, different http uh, http attributes uh, so uh, this is how uh, it looks we are basically you know um, uh, re uh, reading the burp log here uh, this is the log uh, file that we are putting and basically we are uh, basically there are a few features and that we are extracting right now uh, so i have already developed it uh, i uh, didn't want to you know do it from the scratch when we actually uh, when i make this video so this is the this is basically the you know features so far we have i have extracted and uh, since uh, if we see that you know we are not able to you know predict uh, whether any request is good or bad or you know classify any request good or bad we'll be you know fine tuning this features later on so for the first try uh, i have i am extracting these features from you know burp log uh, this is actually i'll i'll explain you know what these features are uh, so a single queue is uh, the whether any single code present in you know uh, the url or http post payload or not whether double quote is present whether any dashes are present double dashes are present whether any uh, braces are present or not and a number of spaces and all these things so i'll quickly uh, go ahead and you know execute this particular script uh, so that i can actually explain it better uh, so let's take a burp crawl log this is the log that we have uh, burp crawl dot log let's add it here http log let's execute it okay i made a mistake i believe yep As you can see, we have actually, you know, we have this log here, http underscore log dot csv. Let's open it and try to understand what's happening here. Yeah. As you can see, it has extracted uh, these features out of this raw burp log that we had. Uh, this is the raw burp log in XML format. And this is too big actually that's why i should not have opened it anyway yeah this is a raw burp log that we are feeding and this is the output that we are getting uh, so um, as you can see we have this is just a normal browsing uh, that i have done using you know burp proxy on and this is the body of that request uh, body of that request uh, and for get request obviously we won't see any body uh, and for post request you will see that you know these parameters are being passed and 
this is the number of single quote double quote dashes braces spaces bad words bad words means whether you know any this uh, keywords are present uh, in the url or post payload or not that we are checking that and if it is present then we you know start counting you know how many you know bad words uh, we have uh, found in um, http get or post payload uh, so basically we are collecting all this data that we are calling it as features and we are actually saving it in the csv file so basically we will use this particular data to kind of train our machine learning algorithm um, and if we, we will f try to find out whether uh, you know we are able to uh, we are able to block any you know malicious request uh, to our server so for th for that actually um, this is actually you know uh, this is uh, we are not sending any malicious request uh, to any server uh, in this log uh, so these are actually you know clean log uh, just simply uh, I have browsed some random sites and this is what uh, this is the log that what I what I've got so to be able to develop this you know intrusion prevention system which actually you know blocks the bad request as well we need you know uh, some HTTP request a good uh, you know amount of HTTP request which are actually you know which are actually known to be bad which are actually malicious in nature so that we can actually our machine learning model can understand you know uh, this is how uh, a bad request looks like and you know and it has already got this you know clean request uh, so after that once we actually extracted uh, these same features from this bad HTTP request as well uh, we what we try to do we'll try to you know uh, we'll try to do some similar thing what we have seen in this example and uh, depending on this uh, this cluster we are going to actually you know uh, predict or we going to detect whether any HTTP request is in bad uh, in nature or it is in good in nature uh, so that's the you know uh, that's the may the, that's the whole concept of this entire project and I'm going to actually go step by step and I'll show you how we can actually easily do it using some of the automated uh, you know uh, machine learning libraries that are available uh, so that's all i wanted to discuss in today's video i hope you have enjoyed today's video uh, by the way this is very important concept important concept that i have actually you know tried to explain to you guys so if you have any doubt or conf confusion uh, please feel free to let me know in the comment section i'll be very happy to you know answer your question or you know clear any doubt that you might have uh, so uh, thank you for watching uh, i'll see you in the next video Bye-bye.